Hi, I'm Morris Pichon, co-publisher of the newsletter Pacoima Today. We've invited Mr. David Barron, a candidate for Council District 7, to address the community. David, welcome to Pacoima. Thank you for the invitation. Um, we've, uh, we've gathered uh, several questions from the community. Uh, we want to talk to you about the things that the people want to know about. And one of the main things I get from, from the people I, com I communicate with is that what can be done, what can a city councilman do to alleviate the problems we have here, like trash pickup, trash dumping, uh, bulk items, bulk item, bulky items always on the street, night and day, and failure of the city to actually remove these items for weeks at a time. What can a councilman do to solve that problem for us? When the, the reason why I'm running is to help to solve these problems and to explain to the residents of uh, <clears throat> why we go through these issues of council uh, office saying we don't have the funds. We do have the funds. Every year we have been breaking records of revenue coming into the city. When our former mayor, Ray Ragosa, was in, we were at a little over, we were over four billion dollars in revenue. Today we are hitting close to nine billion. But the problem is that each council member and our council member previously here over the past 20 years don't want to release that money. They want to use that money and divert it to their political supporters for their pet projects so that they can help get them reelected again. So that's really all that, that is the problem. Me getting into office, I am not there to try to promote myself to get reelected. I want to do the right thing and to uh, put people in in the council, or rather in our staff. For example, a researcher, a, an accountant, construction estimator, and a legal team, attorneys, that will research and look for the monies that are available and due to Council District 7. I hear, I hear that many citizens uh, speak of when they call the district, or call the city, they get, uh, they get things like, oh, we are short on personnel, we short on funds. We don't have the funds. We cannot do this. We cannot do that. Many of us have heard have heard those alibis for something like 20, 30 years. Yeah, and, and again, it's the same reason what I had just explained. Uh, for example, we're going to predict uh, we're coming to a city of deficit for the next budget. It's going to hit probably 250 million dollars, but the city gives away almost three quarters of a billion dollars to developers and to the anti-gang programs and other programs. To, again, it's their political supporters is what they're doing. They're benefiting the, their supporters to help them get re-elected by those ex independent expenditure commercials campaign fund to help them get re-elected again. Several individuals have brought up the idea that recently, in the last 10 years, they put up buildings in Pacoima and, and some of them are not being used. An example is they built a $10 million building over on a property at Hanson Dam. I pass there frequently. It's like, there's only one or two cars in front of that $10 million building. So there's one or two people inside that million dollar building. Mm -hmm. They said it's, a, it's a, a, a headquarters for the park police. We don't see park police. Why was that building built? Why isn't it being used? Again, it's another way to what I would call the way they're laundering the money. The government, our city council, is mm -hmm. getting into the real estate development business using taxpayers to finance these projects by raising our utilities, our um, trash fees, uh, electrical, uh, parking meters, all these fees. And in addition to that, uh, they're creating bills like the Assembly Bill 2. Uh, originally uh, signed by former Senator Alex Padilla and our Assembly member Boca Negra when he was in there first. And that bill says that they want to dismantle zoning laws and be able to declare properties blight and then rezone them and then give these projects to developers. But the developers really don't care about whether they get a field or not because they're making their money right up front when they get that funding from uh, uh, our city through the housing, which is HUD in Washington, D.C. Uh -oh. Another issue is uh, city services like bulk item pickup. When we call the city, why can't we get 
city trucks or city employees to come out and remove some of the garbage and the trash off of our streets? <clears throat> Again, we have we have the funds for that, and uh, again, I will use the staff that I mentioned, mm -hmm. the researcher, the accountant, the legal team, to search for those monies, especially like, uh, or for example, reinstating the uh, the Lopez Canyon uh, Oversight Committee that Alex Padilla dismantled. He didn't want anybody to oversee that money. They want to keep that money for themselves and, di and divert it to their pet projects. So. Again, here's an example of getting into that, uh, putting this oversight committee together again, so they're going to research for that money and any other monies that are due to Kanto District 7. Frequently we hear, we hear people talking about the city ethics committee. What do they do to kind of keep our government from being corrupt or racketeering or whatever you want to call it? A lot, what of, do they do? a lot of problem there again is the one issue is a conflict of interest is they're appointed by the mayor. So it's the fox watching the hen house. Again, so again, we would need more of an independent, like an uh, oversight committee from, uh, from citizens to oversee our elected officials that they adhere to their oath of office. One of the other things that a lot of people are talking about is the homeless situation. Here recently we, uh, I guess the November election, we, we voted for $1.2 million to actually build homes for the homeless people. Once that happens and, and they move homeless people into it, who pays for the electricity, the water, the clean up, the food, and or the maintenance around the properties? Is that another burden, or another bill that's going to be placed on the, on the citizens? Uh, yes, it will be done that way if we keep our same elected officials in office. One way there to, uh, that I plan to bring a motion to help that area of, uh, our, for, of our homeless, let's say, mm -hmm. is that because of the housing department, it's called the Housing Community and Investment Department, uh, oversees the building of affordable housing projects and disperses the money. I would make a motion that the general manager of the housing department be re re relocated to another city department, but the assistant general manager needs to be terminated immediately to avoid any misappropriation of funds or any outside influence, because he was hired by the previous general manager named Mercedes Marquez, who, when she was in Washington, D.C., under HUD, Created a uh, wrote a demand letter. It's an internal document that tells the municipalities throughout the nation, about 1,200 cities throughout the city, uh, throughout the United States, to dismantle zoning laws and to build tens of thousands of affordable housing units, which end up not being affordable because they give enough, but they give more money than the than they need to put up these projects to the developer. Again, it's just a issue that it affects all of our communities, even Council District 7, for example, why we don't get any services, because they're diverting all that money over to their political supporters. And that's why I want so much to get into office, because I work at the Housing Department and we have such a great big influence over all the uh, projects that are going on and there's so much money involved. One issue uh, I heard about yesterday, it's People are asking, because we have these elections and very few people vote, what can be done by the, by the government or by the council district to influence the people to get off their buns and go to the polls and cast a vote? Or to pay attention to the issues that, that we're dealing with and get up and cast a vote for, the, for a politician that's not just here to go to his next job, but one that's here to solve some of the problems we have within our community. Well, I, as a council member, I would uh, work very closely with all the council districts in Council District 7, uh -huh. and uh, with the neighborhood councils, and also with the community organizations like the chambers, and the, any other organizations, and I would issue uh, 
uh, newsletters and also call press conferences when I vote in city council chambers against a policy or a law that the city council wants to introduce. And the reason for the public uh, press conference is so that I can explain to the public, not only to CD7, but the entire city, why I voted no on an issue that would not benefit the uh, rep citizens of all of Los Angeles. Uh, another issue uh, that's kind of concerning people now is the recent uh, release of information that the city, the mayor and the council, they want to <clears throat> take $10 million out of the city's treasury and actually use it to provide attorneys for those individuals that are in fear of being deported because they're here illegally. Folks want to know, folks are saying that, that the city, that we are taxed to take and provide services for the city, but now they're going to just hire lawyers to, to protect people who don't have a right to be here. I don't think that money would actually be directed to help these uh, people that, that are here illegally. I think it was more of a marketing plan for the mayor to use it for his re-election to get people to say, oh, I'm going to help. Because there are already existing nonprofit organizations out there to help such people like that that are uh, have immigration issues. So there's no need to hand out any money. There's plenty of money that the city already issues through grants to these organizations. Yeah. Um. Let me see one other thing. We have uh, over 20 candidates for uh, CD7. How's that going to work out? Uh, I don't think there's enough vote for everybody to get 2,000, but average 2,000 votes. Mm -hmm. But people are concerned about what's going to happen to those that don't win to vote and don't get the council seat. Is it a possibility that an uh, an organization of advocates, people who are concerned about this, about the district, can can work together and, and be um, advocate to the, our our local district, our local councilman, or advocate to the, the city council to take and do things that are solid and not just publicity or smoke and smoke and mirrors comments. No, well, of course, one one candidate will win. Yeah. The rest of the candidates. Um, can either work together by joining already existing neighborhood council coalitions that meet regularly uh, every month throughout the city and uh, they're advocates on the side of the public. So uh, I'm involved in that. I've been involved in that for several years and that's how I've gained information plus of course working at the city I gain inside information. But these uh, other candidates to show their sincerity and actually wanting to serve the public is to continue with the, these programs of coalitions to advocate on the side of the public. Is it possible that, uh, that the citizens can actually get together and, and write a letter or a request that those candidates who don't win actually start attending the neighborhood councils because all our communities have neighborhood councils and you say the neighborhood councils work together and so, would that be a good, a good suggestion? Possibly? Sure, well, we can certainly put that in the, uh, <clears throat> the outreach. The outreach committee uh, of each neighborhood council can do that. <clears throat> and uh, if I was the council member, I would encourage that. I would put it in newsletters. I would call, call press conferences also. The press conferences are very informative because it alerts the entire city which, yeah. uh, and gives information to those other council districts constituents so they can question their council members also. Yeah, this community is in great need, David, and hopefully you get to uh, you get to the seat. We want to remember you and take uh, we'll, we will be knocking on your door requesting some of the things we talked about here, especially about the advocates for the for the communities. Well, thank, thank you very this much important. for the invitation and uh, one issue I can mention to the public is that I want to be able to, that I will not make any um, backroom deals with the city council colleagues, the other 14 members and the mayor, 
any kind of favors in return that would guarantee me to get reelected again. My issue is my allegiance is going to be just for the constituents of Council District 7 and the small businesses. I will uh, give all my dedication, all my power to do everything I can to flesh out the information that we need to know and the funds that are available for Council District 7. Getting reelected, I will not use any uh, discretionary funds to promote myself for another re-election. I just want to do what is right. Thank you. Thank you for your time, David. Thank you, Ms. Bushong.